Welcome to the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I am your host, Katherine Duggan. I created this podcast to inspire you to walk boldly in your Christian faith. Each weekday, I will talk about scripture and how these verses can relate to your everyday life. Spending time each day with the Word of God is a great way to fortify your faith. I'm so glad to have you along on this journey. Let's get started. The title of today's episode is The Formula for Peace. The scripture verse is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, Let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Last Monday, session two of our class was all about peace. The title of the session was The Power of Peace. It was a really good class. I learned a lot about peace and how important it is. I learned that we can impart peace to others. Did you know that? Did you know you can give peace to others? In Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 to 13, Jesus sent the twelve disciples out to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God and also to heal people, cast out demons, and much more. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 13, Jesus says, If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But it is but if it is not worthy, Let your peace return to you. The disciples were instructed to impart their peace, or the peace Jesus gave to them, on the houses that they visited. Deacon Joe, one of our teachers, talked about how he and his wife had a priest stay with them once. He was coming into town for a conference or something, and so they had him stay at their house. Deacon Joe said, from the moment the priest walked into their house, They could feel a peace that wasn't there before. This peace that the priest brought with him stayed in their house long after he left. Have you ever felt this sort of peace in your house before? Have you ever had someone over to your house, and when they were there, you just felt more peaceful? The reverse can also be true, unfortunately. Have you ever had someone over your house, or even just been around someone, and you felt less peaceful? Have you ever spent time with someone, and afterwards you notice you have less peace, you are more agitated, you are more restless? I have definitely had the second one happen. I have interacted with people who have been negative, and then I feel negative. I'm not a fan of that. I do find it intriguing that we can impart peace to others. Peace is something that can feel elusive sometimes. Peace is something we all seem to strive for and yet not too many find. Or at least that's how it seems. I know a lot of people who are anxious. I know a lot of people who are angry. And I know a lot of people who are angry and anxious. I do not know a lot of people who are peaceful. There's so much going on in the world And it's easy to see why people worry a lot. It's easy to see why people are anxious, and even why they're angry. The world can often be an unkind and scary place. Because of this, we might start to feel as if having peace in our lives is a fairy tale. We might think it's unattainable and just something people talk about, but never really achieve. Have you ever felt like that? Honestly, have you? It's okay to say that you have. I totally get it. There is so much going on in the world right now. And it's totally normal to not be at peace or to not have peace. I want to let you in on a well-kept secret. You can have peace even in the middle of the chaos. It's true. You really can. For instance, when I was struggling with my son being in rehab, things were very chaotic. I didn't know what was going to happen from day to day. I had to drive into Boston a lot, 
which is about an hour away. I had a lot of appointments with various people. Yet through all of this, I had peace. Not necessarily peace with the situation, but an overall peace that God was taking care of everything. I knew this was not the end, that God had so much more planned for our son. I had a peace that whatever was going on, it would be used for his good. That doesn't mean every single minute I felt at peace. I definitely had days when I wanted to be through this storm. I definitely had days when I was tired of the struggle, tired of it all. It wasn't smooth sailing the whole time. And yet there was always the sense of peace, the sense of, God's got this. It is hard to explain, but it is possible, I assure you. You don't have to take my assurance, though, because God tells us it's possible in the verse above. And he even gives us a formula, which is really cool, because sometimes we're given a parable and we need to work out what it means. However, in this verse, the formula for peace is spelled out nice and simply for us. Let's take a look at the verse above. It begins with rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. Rejoicing in the Lord is always a good thing. It is possible to rejoice in the Lord, even when you're in a tough situation. You don't have to rejoice for the situation. You can always rejoice for something else, like the sunrise, the nice breakfast you have, or even the fact that you woke up to a brand new day of life. Whatever you want to rejoice for is up to you. But this verse is a great reminder to us to rejoice in the Lord. It is also a good reminder to let our gentleness be known to everyone. This part of the verse is telling us to be nice to everyone. Right after that part is when we get to the formula for peace. It says, The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The first part of the formula is to know that the Lord is near, so you don't have to worry about anything. I know, I know, this is easier said than done. However, I think the rest of the formula makes it a bit easier. The next part says, In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Let's break that down. We all know what pray means. I think we are probably pretty good with the prayer part, especially if we're struggling. Many people, even people who are not Christian, tend to pray when they are struggling. Next, it says supplication. This is a word I had to look up. It means to plead humbly. So God wants us not only to come to him for help, but to plead to him humbly. If you're not sure what that means, in my eyes, That means to come to the Lord in prayer and ask him, plead with him to help you through your situation, knowing full well that you can do nothing without him and all things with him. I get stuck on how to be humble sometimes, but I think it can be as simple as realizing we need God for everything. We can't do anything without him. The last part of the formula might be the hardest. Asking God for help can be hard but it isn't always. However, thanking God when you are in the middle of a storm can be extremely hard. We often do not feel we have any reasons to thank God. Sometimes we're even angry at God for letting this situation happen to us. We blame God for our circumstances. He understands this and doesn't blame us for this. And yet, He is calling us to ask Him for help, turn the situation over to Him, And to do this, all with thanksgiving. This isn't an easy thing to do, but it's totally worth the cost. What does God promise us, if we can, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God? He promises us that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. 
Could you be thankful in the hard times if you knew that you would receive the peace of God? I think it says, which surpasses all understanding, because it doesn't make sense to have peace when there's chaos all around you. It didn't make sense for me to have peace when my son was in rehab. Many people told me they knew I was stressed out and that I was just hiding it. They could not understand that I was at peace with it. Not because I accepted it and stopped fighting for our son. I was at peace because I knew God was in control and that he would use this for our son's good. It surpasses all understanding because the world wants us to stay angry, worried, and anxious. The world doesn't want us to have peace in the middle of a storm. What do you want? Do you want more peace in your life? Do you want to stop worrying about everything all the time? Do you want to be less anxious? Do you want to have the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus? What I love about this is that it's not telling us we have to guard our hearts and minds. It does say that several places in the Bible. However, this verse is telling us if we bring all things to God by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, then the peace of God will protect our minds. How amazing would that be? If you want to feel more peace in your life, check out this formula. Try to apply it to your life and see how much more peace you can have. God did not create us to be anxious and worried. Give peace a try. I know you will not be disappointed. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless all those listening to this episode today. Lord, you are amazing, and we thank you for giving us a formula for peace. We just ask you to help us put it into action, Lord. Please show each one of us how we can put this formula into action in our lives. Please have the Holy Spirit reveal to us where we could be doing this more and what steps are we getting stuck on. Lord, show us where we can be thankful in our current situation. Lord, I know many are hurting right now. I ask that you be with them and comfort them. I ask you to show them how to implement this formula into their lives so they don't have to be anxious and worried. You are so awesome, and you are offering us the peace of God to guard our hearts and minds. We accept, Lord. Please come into our lives and guard our hearts and minds with your peace. Please wrap us up in your peace like a giant blanket that nothing can penetrate. We love you, Lord, and we ask all of this in accordance with your will and in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey to walk boldly with Jesus. I wanted to let you know about a new audio training I created. It's about how to invite Jesus into your every day. Oftentimes we want to pray, we want to spend time with Jesus, and yet we just aren't finding the time to do so. In this audio training, I will teach you how to invite Jesus into the three most common tasks we do each day. If you want to hear the audio training, all you need to do is go to my website, walkboldlywithjesus.com, or you can click on the link below. It will take you to a page where you can put in your name and email, and the audio training will be delivered right to your inbox. I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to reach out and let me know what you think of it. I look forward to meeting you here again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Have a blessed day.